reflect for a moment on living in a country where the majority of the media sort of treats them as equals. They're both the black sheep. They're both in isolation. So you've got one man standing up for what he believes to be right and standing up for his wife. Now, whether you agree that he's right or not doesn't matter. That is what he's doing. He is standing up for what he believes to be right and standing up for his wife, who he believes to have been treated abominably, not just by the British media, but also by his own family, who are so terrified of the British media that they wouldn't say boo to a Murdoch goose. And then on the other hand, you've got a pudding of a man, a pudding in hu- a bread pudding in human form, accused of multiple sexual assaults against the woman who brought a civil case, a man who we know was knocking around with Jeffrey Epstein, a paedophile people trafficker, long after Epstein's crimes had seen him hauled before a court, a man who we know took Jeffrey Epstein to the Queen's favourite house, Balmoral, and photographed him and his partner and partner in crime, Gillan Maxwell, on, on, the, on the steps, on a bench that the Queen had famously been photographed in herself. So this milk pudding of a man, this friend of paedophiles who stayed out of a dock by dint of paying 12 million quid of his mum's money to the woman that had accused him of multiple crimes, he is somehow the yin to Prince Harry's yang, as if the fact that neither of them were allowed to wear uniforms somehow spoke of comparable crimes or comparable offences. I, I, I remember watching that and I enjoyed the coronation and I've got no particular beef with elements of the royal family, but I remember watching that. I'm a fan of Prince Harry. So I, 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 I watched that thing at Camp Bastion. I think it was at Camp Bastion where he was giving an interview to camera and the siren went off and he just pulled off his microphone, he jumped up and he ran towards the, the t- t- towards trouble. I know he's in an Apache or don't don't hit the deep. But I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a bit of a sucker for that sort of thing. People running towards danger. It's why I'm a big, big, big supporter of the fire service, particularly when they're coming under attack from Tory politicians. So Ella Braverman was at it only this week. People who run towards danger, they're not infallible. They've got flaws. They're like the rest of us. They've got failings, but they've got some something inside them that most of us haven't got. And I just liked that. And, and, and if you told me, and then, of course, the image of him walking behind his mum's coffin, which he probably doesn't like people talking about. But my God, as someone who's benefited enormous from th- enormously from therapy and suffered a tiny, tiny fraction of the trauma that that lad must have gone through, that image there, that little boy walking behind it, that coffin, which they made him do... <laughs> astonishing to think that when he turned up for his dad's coronation, he was reduced to the same status as his milk pudding uncle, the paedophile's friend. I, I'm truly breathtaking. But it gets worse. It gets worse. Because, well, not only is the disgraced artist formerly known as Prince trying to win back his £3 million a year taxpayer, you and me funded armed security detail, and not only did Pretty Patel stick her not inconsiderable or in by contacting Panjandrums at the palace on behalf of Andrew after apparently breaking bread with his um, PR advisor. Unbelievable, really. But we also know now that the royal family itself has embarked upon some form of rehabilitation, not of Prince Harry, whose crime was to stand up for himself and his wife, but of Prince Andrew whose offence was to spend £12 million of his dead mum's money keeping himself out of a dock where a woman had accused him of multiple sexual offences. It's not Harry that they're trying to rehabilitate. It's not Harry that was sitting in the passenger seat of Prince William's car last weekend when they all drove to church in Scotland. It was the other one. And I, 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 I can't get my head around it. I truly can't. Marina Hyde, who without whom I think many of us would probably have gone mad over the last few years. Marina Hyde writes in The Guardian today with characteristic brilliance about the sheer impenetrable awfulness of it all. She doesn't go in particularly heavy on Harry, although it's inevitable for me or impossible for me not to see them in in relief to each other. But he's there. In the passenger seat. And, and first of all, as a feminist, I was pretty outraged that his wife, William's wife, was sitting in the back. Kate, Duchess of something or other, was sitting in the back of the car while the paedophile's friend is sitting in the front. It's breathtaking, right? 
Do all fusses die down eventually, asks Marina in this morning's newspaper, permitting the fussy to return to life largely as they knew it, while the public scratches its head and tries to recall precisely which scandal, multi-million dollar out-of-court settlement, Pizza Express branch, it remembers them from. Shush! Driven last weekend by Prince William to church near Balmoral, where the Windsors are currently all gathered with two notable exceptions and uh, i mean there it is right that's that's truly breathtaking isn't it this idea that now it would seem they are trying to just casually reinsert andrew windsor the artist formerly known as prince into polite society into respectable society <laughs> I truly breathtaking. And, of course, it takes you back to the image of Harry being sort of treated as some sort of equivalent to his disgraced uncle and to the little boy walking behind the coffin and to the, uh, about being the abomination, the abominable abuse visited upon him by right-wing media, up to and including Jeremy Clarkson publishing his private fantasies about watching his wife, watching Meghan walk through the streets of the United Kingdom, being pelted with manure while everybody shouted shame. I mean, the mornings where we sort of step back a bit from just how crackpot this country has become are, 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 are the majority. But when you, take the, when you take your glasses off, when you really get stuck in, we're an absolute mess. I mean, these are the people that are the most fated and rewarded members of the UK media. The ones that have got some sort of weird old man obsession with Prince Harry's wife to the point where they often seem to be talking or writing about nothing else. And yet when the paedophile's friend is driven to church by the future king, they haven't got a single syllable to say about it. I wonder whether you could explain that to an outsider. 0345 973 Why is the future king driving his disgraced uncle to church while... His brother remains in a form of exile. 0345 6060 973. It's perfectly possible, as quite a few of you are pointing out, that Harry wouldn't want to be welcomed back into the bosom of the family. We don't know. We'll never know. And there's certainly no notion of rehabilitation with Prince Harry. There's nothing to rehabilitate him for. He's done nothing wrong except stand up for what he believes to be right and for his wife. The list of what his uncle has done wrong is as long as your arm. And yet he's the one that the future king is driving to church on a Sunday morning. Do you know in the next hour we're likely to talk about the decline of Christianity in this country and the fact that for the first time in living memory, a majority of people living here do not describe themselves thus. I think that might be a large part of the reason. Closest most people get to church is pictures of the royal family attending mass. And a more, uh, how could one put this politely, a more varied bunch of adulterers and breakers of commandments you are unlikely to find assembled in one place it was human feces was it rather than manure i can't remember so just explain it to an outsider why, why is why is the paedophile's friend getting the glad hand from his royal family while prince harry is still in isolation or or or, or leave harry out of it if you prefer what do you think about Andrew, the artist formerly known as Prince, being essentially eased back into public life by the future king of this country. 0345 6060 973 is the number you need. And I mean, you may well know more about the royal family. Well, no, you don't know more about the royal family than I do. Nobody knows more or less about them. We all know exactly the same about the royal family. People who pop up on your telly claiming to be royal experts, they know exactly the same about the royal family that you do. Everything we know is, is, is massaged and released and carefully cultivated. It's a, it's a perfectly healthy process by which privacy is protected and the price paid for that is some... Um, some sort of form of access. But my goodness me, when you think about that lad in California, serving his country, risking his life, falling in love and being treated like public enemy number one as a consequence. And then you think about his uncle, who took Jeffrey Epstein to sit on the Queen's bench at Balmoral. And which one is the future king warming up to? Yeah, you got it. You got it in one. Just explain it to me. Have a crack at explaining it to me. I bet you can't, but you're going to have to try. 
Well, my theory is that the difference is not because of what they did or didn't do or how bad what they didn't do or do was. It's basically that Harry has broken the family code and Andrew hasn't. That's what weird. I mean That's by some that, code, isn't it? Go on. It sounds, yeah, it was a bit like the mafia, I think. Um, yes. <laughs> when, you're, when you're in that family, you cannot talk to the press. You have to certain ways, you know, you can't talk, you can't... You, you've got to kind of follow the family code, which as far as I can see is protect William and then the second in line tends to be the one that they leak stories out. Leave leave him alone um, and we'll give you some dirt on the other one. Yes, yeah. correct. And, they, and and that's done in, in little... In, in increments. Well, go after and his wife. Fill your boots. Write what yeah, you want about his wife. Correct. That'll sell papers, yeah. but leave him out of it. Leave yeah. him alone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's what, that's Harry's accusation, isn't it? I think that's the, yeah. that, that is part yeah. of his and, thesis. And, and I think, yeah, and I think that's why um, Andrew can be rehabilitated because he didn't break the family code. He, you know, uh, uh, basically, Harry, um, I guess, he, uh, <laughs> by writing his book and putting everything out there, he stopped them having any, any ammunition against him. Mm. And I think that that was, I think that's the main problem. But I think the thing is, basically, Andrew kept the code. He didn't say anything at the press, doesn't matter what he's done, because he's kept the code. And that actually just, he, yeah. s- speaks, uh, I didn't think I'd be saying this at 11.36 today, but that speaks to the conversation we had in the last hour about Chinese communism. You may not realise this yet, Sarah, but I'm pretty sure it does, <laughs> because because they're, they're thinking about the next Harry. And they're thinking yeah. about, uh, you know, the great, great, great. So it, it, if you are born into this family, then the only rules that matter are our rules. Yes. And Harry broke our rules. Andrew didn't. Yes. Therefore, there is yeah. a way back for him, which means that their great, great, great grandchildren will, you know, the precedent is, is upheld, isn't it? That the, the rules you can't yeah. break... Are the, yeah. are the rules of what? What do the mafia call it? A murder, I think. The rules of a murder, and and so you can pay twelve million pounds of your mum's money to a woman who has accused you of three separate sexual assaults and not break the family code. But if you call out your family for colluding with the media in attacks upon your wife, then you're toast. Correct. That's exactly how I see it. Good. I grief. think it's terrible. <laughs> Well, then I must invite you to answer the next question, which is how how or why does the British public go along with this level of moral corruption?